so my, my project uh, focused around my three main core classes, which is peace studies, global issues, and environmental science. Um, and I have a huge passion for baseball. It's kind of my life, uh, actually. And um, so I decided you know, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to incorporate baseball into these three. So without further ado, um, the peace studies, we focused a lot on you know, racial equality. And uh, I thought it would be a great idea if I could uh, you know, turn racial equality into something about baseball. So I'm going to start with, so this is, I'm primarily <coughs> focusing on Major League Baseball because all the other baseball leagues are not as well documented. Um, and uh, so Major League Baseball, it's just like a really short um, timeline. So it's, Major League Baseball was established in 1889 uh, and uh, was in state segregated, which is what we talked about, state segregated up until 1947. So that's a really long time. Um, but um, baseball, on well, the major league level, was uh, the highest level, supposedly the highest level is where um, you know, the, all the white players played. It had no black players in it up until 1947. So while there were excellent black, black ball players in, you know, before 1947, so they created their own league. It was called a Negro National League. And so they played barnstorming. You know, they did barnstorming tours against the best white teams, and they beat them every time, supposedly. Uh, which was, I thought was kind of ironic, because Major League's supposed to be the best of the best, and they get beat every single time by these black teams, which I thought was just funny, because well, it's Major Leagues. But um, I, I just, in 1947, the, the Civil Rights Movement hadn't really gotten any steam yet, but it was still pretty early. Uh, but the Dodgers decided that um, a few teams were looking at black ball players and wanted to integrate the game. They couldn't do it if, because the commissioner of the league before um, 1943 uh, had a very strict stance on uh, segregated baseball. But uh, of course, I'm sure if you guys know part of the story of Jackie Robinson. Uh, integrated baseball in 1947. Um, when he did, there was a lot of hate because uh, he played, he was the only black ball player in an all-white baseball game, baseball, uh, uh, and people were very discriminatory, so they wrote hate mail. So you can see like this, people wrote him thousands of letters of hate mail, um, pretty much just racist, um, and you know, telling him, or field, we're going to murder you and stuff like that. So uh, Jackie paved the way for many of the other great ball players, and paved the way for uh, a ball player named Kurt Flood, who who was a black ball player. Who in 1970, let's skip forward because um, I want to get into the economics part. <laughs> uh, who in um, 1970 uh, created free agency, which is where before free agency. Uh, the owners of baseball teams had complete control over their players and they could pay them whatever they want within reason. Uh, some players could demand more because they were better players, but they had no choice, or no choice of how uh, much they did get paid. Um, the owners, uh, up until 1970, a lot of players had to have another job other than baseball because they just didn't get paid enough. So, uh, I, Kurt Flood was the first free agent uh, because he walked out on his team because his team didn't give him enough money. Really good ball player, so they decided. So we decided, I'm going to go get make some more money. So uh, he he signed for a very high price, and now the team's owners realized, oh, well, now we have to um, compete for for the, for the best players when they had a free agency. So that's when salaries skyrocketed. You can see here uh, on this graph the minimum salaries and you know the average salaries and how they kind of shot up through 1970 when free agency started up and were, well this goes to 2010, but you can see where the, um, this is the minimum salary and this is the average salary. So an average salary in 2010 for Major League Baseball players is about $3 million. Uh, the average salary back in 1970 when it started was roughly 29000 which is like minimum wage. Um, now, uh, Free agency obviously brought with it a lot of greed, and by teams uh, being greedy, they uh, were endorsed by a lot of companies, and they 
plaster them like really ugly on their stadiums. So there's really ugly stadiums like U.S. Cellular Field. That's the worst name for a baseball field I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can see they're sponsored by Pepsi, Miller Lite, McDonald's, like Motorola and shit. So this is pretty much what all the stadiums look like. They're given awful names like U.S. Southern Field. That was just the worst. That's that's my least favorite one. Uh, AT and T is pretty bad, but U.S. Southern just takes the cake for the most. Um, and so I wanted to just show you, you know, how advertising has really, you know, brought a lot of money and income into Major League Baseball to pay players more money. Uh, now this is the white. This is where the White Sox play. And let me uh, show you a. It's a short thing. Let's go back in about 100 years. Um, the 1990 Chicago White Sox who the World Series for money because they didn't get enough money because their owner was uh, really cheap. And so they threw so they threw the series, eight players through the series, and they were all banned for life. There's a great movie called uh, Eight Men Out, which you should probably see. It's kind of a fantasy depiction of this because no one's really sure how it went down. But uh, a bunch of gangsters off them like, you know, the like the series. Uh, this is going back to cheating. <coughs> what I wanted to say about cheating was, uh, well, back in back in, uh, 19, in the 1990s, there's steroids. So you can see this dude, Jose Canseco, he was kind of a skinny guy, and then he took steroids and he got really fun. Um, so steroids were a way for players to make more money because they put up bigger numbers because they were juicing. That's half the major leagues who were juicing. Uh, yeah, this dude wrote a book called Juiced, and it like just like outed like half the half the major leagues. You should probably read it. It's pretty interesting. Um, uh, so this is yeah, an issue for a while. Um, steroid era. I guess I'll get into that. Uh, this is just a quick um, synopsis of that. Um, so it, the steroids that many of them used were shots that you. Gluteus magnus, which is your butt muscle. That you insert it in your butt and muscle. That's how that's how you insert steroids. Uh, there's also lozenges, which, uh, but it was called the cream of the clear, which is which uh, goes to the Balco uh, conspiracy, which is where all the players uh, said they did take steroids, but everyone knew they did. And uh, it's an undetectable steroid because it's used for bulking up cattle, and it's and those machines that they used were used to detect uh, human growth hormones, but if you use something that's kind of modif like chemically modified to, uh, you know, be in a human, but it's actually supposed to be in cows. So um, it really isn't supposed to be in the human body, but it was, and that's why it was basically undetectable by the human growth hormone detectors that they had. Um, so here are my sources. Most of, the, most of the information I got was just from a lot of encyclopedic books. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when, I was, when I was little, it still looked like this. I still look to this day, I'll, I'll read, I get Baseball America, which is the, you know, the pretty, the pretty boring, bland stat book of all the prospects and stuff that I'd love to read. I would also be like, why do you read that, man? But I love it. Um, it's, so it's just books that I read when I was younger. You know, baseball is like pages that were like that thick that I just went through when I was like eight. Um, and uh, you know, that's pretty much you know, how I came up with this project because it's just one of, one of my huge passions that I wanted to incorporate all three of my classes into something like this, um, which I, I feel extremely privileged to be able to come up here and ramble about something that I love so much. So thanks. Great.